On today's video, we're gonna go through a case study for a logo that was designed for Steve Jobs and he paid a lot of money for it. And in this video, we're gonna understand why people pay so much money for a logo. Let's rock it. Hey designer friends, what is up? My name is Ron Segal and welcome to Flux. If this is your first time here, welcome. Our YouTube channel is the best place for you to learn how to become a great designer and make a living as a designer. And today we're talking logo design. A lot of people don't really understand why people pay so much money for a logo. And so today I wanna to give show you a case study for a logo that was designed for Steve Jobs in the mid 80s, Steve Jobs left Apple and he actually started a new computer company called Next and they hired uh, one of the best designers at the time, uh, a designer called Paul Run. He was like a super celebrity, famous designer back at the time. Uh, he was known for designing logos like IBM, ABC, and Steve Jobs basically hired him to design the logo for the new computer called Next. Now, Paul Rand's, uh fee, like minimal fee for a project was $100,000 at the time, which is 1980s dollars. Today is like $250,000 of our money today just for a logo project. Now, when he did the logo for them, uh, basically he did a presentation. Now, back at the time, there wasn't like a presentation, PowerPoint presentation where people would just go and present stuff. So they literally came to do the presentation and they would print kind of like booklets. Now, the booklet is available online and it's such a magnificent case study for how a designer sells and explains the design process to a client and how it, it makes the whole process so much more valuable. So I'd like to go through this with you and maybe you can learn how to valuably uh, explain your design process to the client so they, they can understand and be sold on why your design choices are the relevant ones. So let's dive right into it. So this is on Paul Rand's website. I'll show you later on. Uh, they have a lot of case studies and you can literally see the logo presentation books. So this is the one for Next. And again, Next, just for context, it was a computer, uh, computer oriented for education. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Uh, the sign of the next generation of computers for education. Okay, so basically it started off with, it's basically written, this booklet is written like uh, Paul would present it, right? So it's basically speaking like, what should a logo for next look like? So he starts off with, let's think about choosing a typeface, right? So he starts off looking at two different typefaces, Castellan and B4. And he's basically giving context here. So Castellan is an alphabet designed far back in 1725 by William Castellan. It appears to be a good choice because it's both elegant and bookish, which are quality good for educational purposes. Now on this one, on the other hand, you know, uh, before it's a novelty face designed by A.M. Cassander. Um, it was designed recently and it looks unconventional. It looks, you know, very techy and looks like advanced and technology and stuff like that. So both of these fonts can look somewhat good. But then when he was looking at more fonts, he's saying, look, we can review all of these fonts and they all look very nice. But when you're looking at them at the end of the day, what you see is the word next, right? Which is just an ordinary word, right? Like what's next, next time and so forth. So we really need to do something different if we want this to become an actual logo and not just a word. So next he was looking at, let's look at the letters, like how is the capital letters or you know uppercase, lowercase text looks like? Because he found that if you write next in capital letter, people might actually mix it up for exit because it's very similar words. So doing all of these experiments, he noticed that if he's just making the E lowercase while the rest is uppercase, it actually is creating kind of a dissonance that makes it look weird enough for you to, to grab your attention. And so why the E all of a sudden out of all of these texts, uh, all of these other letters? Well, you know, E, you can say it stands for education or excellence or something else, right? It's pretty random, but as he said, we can find basically a reason to make the E looks different, but also it's it's it, the, it's the only letter that when it's small, it's also round and it has a shape that even if we put all the letters in the same size, it does stand out, right? It makes the word look very, very differently. And so the next thing that he said is, 
we want we want to somehow give this meaning, right? He was mentioning, you know, when we did the IBM logo, there's nothing really about IBM signals that tells com that it's computers, right? Uh, people find that meaning after they see this a lot of time, right? And the ABC logo, which is a circle, there's nothing TV about it, but after people saw this a lot, they, they've they built this meaning into it. So he says, how can we give some kind of meaning into this text? We wanna put some kind of a graphical element to it, right? Like the stripes in the IBM or maybe the circle in the ABC. So here he said, maybe let's try to put it in some kind of a black box. Why a black box? because it's probably a good fit for you know a computer and all the, the concepts that we have here. So basically let's take uh, the words that we already know what the words should look like um, and put them inside of the box. And basically he says, we wanna really make sure that we keep the, the, the letters very, very simple, uh, unmannered, untrendy, so that they're not going to distract us from the concept. And he also said, it's really a great idea to break the word next into two lines, because then it's, again, you have to pay more attention to it. It doesn't look like the word, the ordinary word next to begin with. Um, and also people are now, you know, with the love sign, uh, people used to read kind of like two, two lines of two letters. People already know how to interpret this, right? So basically, this is his explanation of why he made all those choices, why he chose this font, why he chose to make the E different lowercase when the rest are lower, uh, uppercase, why he chose to break it into two line verses. And you can see here at the top, what would it look like if it was just one line, the letters would be very, very small. So those are all of the reasoning. And by the way, I encourage you later on, I'll put the link to the to this page later on to go and read exactly how he described this. It's very, very interesting how he sells it. Next, he's talking about the colors. So which colors should we use for this? And basically he's saying, you know, we're picking different colors. Uh, we're basically making it appealing to young people, which is the target audience here. Let me see uh, how he phrases this. Um, unconventional yet dignified area of colors. Um, do, 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 in itself decorated. I think he says some somewhere here that it's oriented for young people like bright colors or something like this. But then he also showed, well, this can be black and white and this can be with the colors of the letters, but it can also be duotoned. And then he's showing all kinds of things that you can do with the logo, like you can put it as a stamp. And a lot of things that we talk about in logo presentation as in showing clients who usually lack imagination how their logo is going to be used in real life. Well. I hope this was helpful for you. I highly recommend you go in and check out exactly how Paul was telling the story. I personally have used this kind of methodology to explain my logo process to clients again and again, from how I chose the typeface into how I chose the symbol. Took them through a process. I didn't just jump ahead and show them like the end result. I took them through a journey, through my design journey and the choices that I've made to explain to them the design process. Now, going back to the original kind of like, why do people pay so much money for a symbol? They're not paying so much money for a symbol as in they are paying so much money for you to convince them that this is the right symbol. And there is a really quote that I really like by Paula Scher, who is also an amazing designer from Pentagram. And she basically said, yes, every you know four-year-old kid can do uh, a rectangular in Illustrator and that's a great logo, but almost nobody can sell it to a boardroom of people with so many different opinions. Now, when you come with something like this, with a presentation like this, that breaks down your logic step-by-step, step, clients are basically they are sold because you're taking them through the journey and everything makes sense. Everything is justified. It's not just there randomly, it's there because of a reason and it makes it so much easier for people to just say yes to your design. And for, for you to helping them making that decision, that is worth a lot of money. All right, as I've said, I, I just wanna 
mention again, check out Paul's Rand uh, website. I'll link it below here under works. You can see a lot of his works and there's a lot more of these logo booklets. So you can go ahead and check them out um, and learn a lot from them, from how he presented them and from really timeless works because still a lot of his logos are still in use years and years, decades and decades after he did them. So you can really learn a lot from this. Let me know if you enjoyed this video in the comments below and we'll do some more historic case studies for you. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.